Thanks for that introduction. So we're, what's the gynaecologist doing talking about um, facial threads? Shouldn't he be up the other end of the body? Perhaps my, my, um, the vast majority of my time within my gynaecological world is with the correction of prolapse and, and bladders and bowels and things that are falling out of the pelvis. And it's not a major leap to uh, go from that to, to uh, prolapse of tissues in the face, I guess. Uh, it's, I always find it fascinating to see how, much, how many similarities there are in, in um, correcting prolapse in both parts of the body there, including the suture material that's used, the polypropylene that's usually used for, for both areas of the body. Firstly, um, the disclaimer, I, I, I am a trainer for Promo Italia, the, the, the Italian threads, um, both here and, and in New Zealand, but I receive no, um, I have no financial interest with Promo Italia or, or any other uh, distributor or maker of, uh, of, of threads, and, uh, and certainly no financial remuneration for this. Just a quick history, you, you, I think everybody is aware that the Russian threads were the first the first out there with the uh, free floating thread. Uh, 14 years ago now, they, they, uh, they first came out, but not to Australia. We, we couldn't get them in Australia, and initially most of us had to make these ourselves. And then um, Aptos was the name that was used. And Aptos, if you can see that, it's not a very clear picture, but um, Aptos is a free floating, free floating thread, which is hard to say where the, the barbs on this um, 2O polypropylene, 2O proline, the barbs are converging into the centre of the thread. And as you know, the, um, the concepts with that, um, with the use of that toss threads were that um, it was felt and hoped that the, the barbs would lead to fibrosis and skin shrinkage and therefore the correction of sagging and some facial lines. But I think it's fair to say that um, with those early up toss threads, the results were were quite um, disappointing. There was breakages of threads were not uncommon and extrusion of threads was not uncommon. And the, um, the recurrence rate was unacceptably high in most, people's, in most people's eyes. So that led to variations in Naptos threads and, and uh, people began producing different versions of those threads where they were tied together or loops were formed or they were attached instead of being free floating they were attached to, to a fascia, usually fascia over the temporalis fascia or a mastoid fascia in order to prevent and improve, uh, prevent the complications and improve the results. And the next part in the evolution was the, the helical threads, the, the contour threads which which so far have probably provided the majority of the marketing in this area and training. And I would imagine that a number of you in the audience were trained to put in contour threads. Contour threads, um, I guess the early, proponent, the early proponents of contour threads have felt that the, the fibrosis that would be induced by the, um, along, the, along the track of the thread would be enough to provide several years of, uh, of prolapse correction. That was the early proponents. They felt that that fibrosis would be would last long enough to provide at least several years of correction of, of prolapse and ptosis. And I think it's also fair to say that most of those people were disappointed in those long-term results. Short-term, perhaps intermediate-term, whatever that means, 12 months, two years, probably the majority were satisfactory. But beyond that, fair to say that most people were not happy with those results. Along came um, silhouette, which um, similar sort of concepts, but instead of barbs, where the, the pro polypropylene was was um, was cut in different areas to produce those barbs, instead of that concept, a, a uh, cones were used, absorbable cones were used instead of barbs, and we'll be talking about um, silhouette sutures in a bit more detail in a second. And then the most, the final, or at this stage, the the most recent uh, part in the evolution of threads were the the, the Italian threads, the Prometalia which um, uh, in many ways were like uh, contour, but um, as we'll see, with some differences. So what's happening now? Where are we up to now? Well, there's no more Russian threads. I never really were here in the first place. Um, Aptos and Aptos variations have crossed out. It's not quite fair to cross them out because there are various ways of getting um, those Aptos variation sutures into the country. Um, Aptos, however, that word Aptos can't be used anymore unless you're talking about Prometalia threads down the bottom there. Contour threads taken off the market because of, um, uh, in the company's eyes, they, they were better off using their, 
their energies and efforts um, using that part of their, their, um, their manufacturing process, producing other threads. So now we're left with those two, basically, when, and that's, the, that's what I'm going to be talking about for these, for the, mostly for the remainder of the talk. So Silhouette from Italia, um, available threads. I, I guess we can say that um, homemade threads, if you like, where we cut the threads ourselves are still available, but I don't want to talk about those. I, I want to spend the time talking about those two principal sutures that are being used, principal threads that are being used for, for facial uh, correction. So silhouette to start with. Silhouette, there it is there. You can see, um, you can see the, the long needle here to be um, passed beneath the, the dermis, the smaller needles to be attached to either the, the fascia in the scalp or the, the mesh that uh, many insert over that fascia or periosteum. And you can see that um, the, the basic suture material is 3O proline, 3O polypropylene rather than the 2O that all the other threads are and have been, so a, a finer polypropylene. And then, it may not be terribly clear there, but they're clear absorbable cones. Cones instead of threads, uh, in theory not going to weaken the, the thread, less likely to break. Um, and those absorbable cones will be fully absorbed within three months. What's involved in the technique of a silhouette um, procedure? Well, it's a fairly large incision. There's probably four or five or six centimetre incision over the scalp down to the level of the periosteum. And uh, uh, the majority of people using uh, silhouette threads will insert a polypropylene mesh there and uh, attach that to the, the periosteum. You can see on the left there the, uh, the yellow line showing the, the, the route that this long needle is going to take beneath the, beneath the dermis. And you might be able to see some of these cones uh, being inserted there um, following that track down. Then the, um, uh, uh, the, the mesh itself is anchored, sutured to the periosteum and the wound's closed. What can we say about silhouette? Well, I, uh, talking, to, talking to colleagues who insert a lot of threads, the, the general trend is away from the use of silhouette. There, there are people who will still swear by its procedure and, and uh, produce what appear to be quite good results, but the, the, impression, the impression of the trend that I'm getting is that it's, um, it's, it's losing its popularity. Why? Um, some will say because of the, the, the difficulty and the extra effort involved in inserting the silhouette threads. Um, some will say they stop because of the complications with those cones, even though they're absorbable, even after that 30 days, some are, some are experiencing um, discomfort and uh, presumably inflammation over those areas where the cones were. Uh, one advantage the users of silhouette will say is, well, once that 30 days is up, if there are any complications related to the polypropylene, it can be removed. There's no, there's no barbs or other restrictions to removing that. And that's true, but, but uh, some are still experiencing pr problems with the, with the cones. So on to um, promotelia threads, and that's, that's the, for the majority of the rest of the time now, I'll talk about promotelia threads. That's, um, they're the ones I've had the majority of my experience with. So promotelia, um, what are they? You can draw some, put up some pictures there of the different types of um, threads available. And those first two, th those of you who have put in uh, contour threads in the past, we'll look at that and we'll, we'll say, well, that's exactly what we're used to putting in ourselves, the, the, um, the, uh, the, the long needle that goes beneath the dermis, the, the um, curved needle for attaching to the fascia or periosteum, or the double needle here. And, and at first appearances, they are the same, at first appearances. One extra thread that Promotelia produced, though, is the, is the free-floating thread, the Aptos thread again. And as you say, they've, they've now painted it that name, the Aptos thread. The, the, uh, you'll be familiar with that, um, that model, the, 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 um, the face of contour threads with their advertising. And the, the techniques for a number of the application insertion of Promotelia threads are virtually the same. Here we are here with the, that... Um, that uh, very small incision over the temporalis fascia, the use of the long needle beneath the dermis and, and an exit point uh, where you think it's most appropriate, um, that uh, needles removed, the, um, the curved needles, if that's what you're using, are attached into the fascia, those needles are removed, the um, face is pushed up and the dermis is, is uh, pushed up so that those barbs can engage on the dermis, on the, under the surface of the dermis, and then the, the needles are removed, um, ideally just above where the exit points are. And um, that's the mid-face and, and perhaps jowls, but, but um, we can use similar sort of techniques for the, for the brow and for the, for the neck. Uh, 